Hello, welcome back to Access. My name is Nathan, and I am here with Simon from Roll7, who is the director of Oli Oli 2. Welcome to Hollywood. Nice name. Can you tell us when it's coming out? It's coming out to PlayStation 4. Uh, yeah, it should be hitting Europe on the 4th of March. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, because I loved Oli Oli. I spent like a ridiculous... I was telling you how much time I spent on it and that I'd unlocked Brad mode. That's a, you, that's a serious feat, by the way. Yeah, and you made a face like that made me actually proud, because before I was just, you know, like, oh my God, what have I done? So, I mean, tell us what is, what's new. I mean, there are... So I've seen the trailer, mm. as I'm sure people who are interested in the game have seen the trailer. Um, visually, I mean, we, we kind of talked about these things earlier on, and mm. on your list of things that you knew were, and you hope no one else would notice, were kind of not quite to your liking about the first game. Yeah. As everyone does, you're going to be your harsh, own harshest critic. Visuals were, were up there, and what kind of stuff was it specifically about the way that the game looked that you guys wanted to improve? Um, I think, like, obviously, sort of the pixel style of the original is part of its charm, is part of how, how it works. I think there's some areas of that that we were looking to look in, you know, to actually kind of to up the game on. So around visual clarity, around certain things that you should and shouldn't do within the game. So what elements are grindable, mm. what elements are um, like obstacles that will trip you up. Um, and I think also like um, being skateboarders, we wanted to have more clarity in, uh, I guess, sort of twice the amount of frames per trick. So okay. actually being able to see exactly what the board is doing. Um, so we were approached by a number of different uh, kind of lead artists who had different ideas on where they wanted to take the game. Mm. Uh, and we were sort of introduced to Manuel Harari, who um, ended up being the game's lead artist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he sort of presented very much a kind of clean, crisp, um, sort of almost vector style uh, approach, which we ended up taking on. And I think he's done a sort of fantastic job of making the game shine and how does that in terms of like so moment to moment within the game as you're pulling off tricks and stuff how mm. does that does it give you kind of more precision or how does it yeah absolutely i think i think sort of people who played oli oli and maybe sort of felt like it could have a bit more precision it's it's absolutely um it feels a lot more precise more pixel perfect now so right. especially as the game needs to be that anyway you know that that does that does definitely help and i think also you can definitely get a feel for exactly what trick you're you're doing at any one point, whereas on Oli Oli One, especially on the scroll, smaller screen of the Vita, sometimes you're not 100% sure what the board's doing underneath yeah. you. This time it's <laughs> like, okay, I just did a hard flip, or I just did a 360 flip, or that yeah. was a Nolly shove it, or whatever. Yes, yes. So you, what you're telling me is there's no excuse for me not to get into rad mode you, this time. Yeah, okay. you, you better do. Right, okay. <laughs> And the, and the other thing, talking about moves, I was telling you earlier on, this is embarrassing, but I've played, you know, I've been playing Tony Hawk games, Skate, and now I've played a lot of Oli Oli, like dozens of hours of Oli Oli. And I'm still not really, like, up with all my terminology, but I understand there are new, there are new tricks and ways of playing the game. So ma manuals is the thing I hear. Explain to me, people know what they're talking about, obviously now I think I'm an idiot. But yeah, explain to me, and, and that's gonna, how, how that is gonna change gameplay. Yeah. Right? Um, I guess like manuals is the biggest sort of addition that we're going to make that's going to change how people play the game. Um, so I guess a manual is essentially like a wheelie. Um, so you're up on sort of two wheels. Um, and what it does is it allows you to chain together combos. So it allows you to okay. take um, a section of combo here and a section of combo here and where you've got a flat piece at the uh, sort of in between them, oh, you'll actually be able to chain those together. But I guess sort of the risk being that because you've not you've not banked your score by that point, yeah. if you then mess up the trick later on in the game, then you will end up oh, losing man. all of it. So it becomes, to a certain extent, about working out when you want to bank yeah. those scores. So it's a gamble, it's a risk. So similar to the kind of the later levels in the first Oli Oli, where you could grind from one end to the other, now you're basically able to manage your score like that on every level. Absolutely, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> no, no, I know what that means. That's terrifying. Yeah. Um, and but and there's also new, other new things coming. There's going to be multiplayer for the first time, which is going to be coming a few weeks after the the release of the actual the, of the main game. Yeah, absolutely. So um, multiplayer um, will be patched in um, later on in the process. We're just 100% finalising that, and it hasn't quite made the cut yeah. at this stage. We wanted to make sure the abs the, the core game was absolutely spot on. And um, it's going to give me a way to because Dave was giving some smack <laughs> talk from behind the camera. <laughs> Earlier on about how even though he hasn't unlocked rev mode, he's somehow better at the game than me. Thanks, Dave. So and you were like, well, you guys are going to be able to tell. So you, so you kind you of will, yeah. So, so it's local, right? Local multiplayer. So you'll be able to sit with four four friends uh, in total and split screen action. Uh, you'll be able to race each other. 
So it's who can basically get as many perfect grinds and perfect landings right. and not crash, get to the end of the level. Uh, we've got score, so it's who can get to a million first or two million. You set every sort of every setting yourselves. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got time, so you might have a minute, who can get the biggest score in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. And then the final mode is like a spot mode, so who can get the most on on any particular sort of one run. So it kind of allows you to create your own bespoke Oli Oli tournament with your mates. Yeah. Um, and playing it with the team at Roll7, it's just, <laughs> it's one massive shouting match. Yeah, it yeah. is just like, and the way that the HUD actually sort of interacts and shows you who's in the lead at any one time um, within any, any given situation, um, it's just like, yeah, a cacophony of swearing and, <laughs> and shouting. So. We're drowned out by, this is my link to the next thing, which yeah. I want to talk about the music. Oh. Because the music was like, uh, it's, it's strange. Like the Vita games that I my, my my Vita experience has been Hotline Miami, really, and then yeah. I went straight into Oli Oli, and I was like, my God, you know, like how much it can add to a game. Mm. So you have curated a whole new soundtrack for this one. Am I right in thinking? And kind of yeah. what can we expect from that? Yeah. So um, we've I think we had about eleven or twelve tracks in the original game, mm. and this time we've got eighteen tracks. So it's sort of an extended soundtrack, and they've been handpicked and sort of selected over a period of about eight months so it's been a very slow process a labor of love but we've got i'd say like the most awesome tracks in the game that we could ever hope for yeah uh, there's a number of tracks that we just never thought we'd be able to get and we approached the artists um and some of them are quite obscure some of them are sort of a bit bigger but there was like one particular track um called should have known by a, an artist called gand um and it's a remix and he's from um, Amsterdam or something, I don't know. But anyway, we, we desperately wanted this track. We didn't think we were going to be able to get it. And we've been negotiating with them for five months. Nice. And we just wouldn't, we weren't <laughs> going to give up. And we signed it just before we sort of locked the entire soundtrack. So. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, no, I think we're like, like really excited about the soundtrack on this one. And we've added this new sort of functionality. So you get something like 12 tracks initially. And then as you progress through the different worlds, each time you get to a new world, yeah. it unlocks a new track, which gets added into your what playlist. Into your playlist, we thought it was kind of cool. Oh, touch. Man, yeah. kind of, and you were talking about again. We mentioned the visuals earlier. Mm. The, the you were talking about how the each each level this time looks. It's got a very distinctive feel to it, which obviously the music's going to help with. But yeah, I think sort of one of the things that we really wanted to make sure is that the the levels didn't feel like they were getting repetitive, mm. um, and we've because we've gone with a cinematic idea, welcome to Hollywood, this idea of, um, I guess it's sort of like we're placing our skater in these studio sets, these green screen studio sets. Exactly, yeah, um, yeah. And he's like essentially been thrown into initially Hollywood, which is, I guess, sort of a Hollywood screen set, um, sort of sound stage. And then you're sent on to um, Curse of the Aztec, which is, I guess, like, Indiana Jones sort of temple. Gotcha. Topic. Yeah, adventuring. Yeah, and then you've got after that we've got um, I guess it's sort of Back to the Future three Wild West vibe. Okay, that's um, really specific. Yeah, very specific. <laughs> and then after that there's sort of a um, uh, haunted uh, carnival sort of fairground place which is super neon and really awesome. Oh man. Nice. And then the final level is Titan Sky, which is just like basically like future epic. Um, is, it, is it in the air? Is it, it, it is actually, yeah. You're, you're sort of skating through um, this big robot kind of titan infested um, strange facility type thing and there's just all this epic stuff going on. It's, uh, it's quite special. It's oh, sort yeah. of, I guess it was um, inspired by Blade Runner and things like that. We're all kids of the 80s so it's, wow. it's, it's all 80s films given yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying all the, the right words. I must say, this <laughs> yeah. is exciting. Yeah. And the, well, the only other thing I wanted to ask about was, and I'm, you've probably been asked about this before, bigger shoes. Bigger shoes is in your trailer. It's one of the things that pops up. Are they literally just bigger? Bigger shoes, yeah. You'll notice that these shoes are two sizes too big for me, but that's how, <laughs> that's how we roll now. Um, <laughs> no, um, he does have big shoes, yeah. Uh, I said, <laughs> we, uh, they're, they're almost like the shoes that um, Marty McFly has in Bachelor of the Future 2. You right, know, yeah, Nikes yeah, that they're yeah, meant yeah, to be like releasing this year? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're not, and we're not using any Nike branding whatsoever, <laughs> just in right. case there's lawyers who are going to sue us. They were inspired by. Yeah, I think like we wanted to go with some slightly bigger shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think anyone would ask about those, but yeah. Well, I'm glad I did. Yeah. Uh, well, that's awesome. So, Ollie Ollie 2, welcome to Hollywood, out on PlayStation 4. 
and PlayStation Vita. Uh, straight away? Yep. See, that's how much I've been paying attention. That's even better. <laughs> um, and at the beginning of March, with multiplayer to follow in the, in the weeks following. So thank yeah. you very much for joining us. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>